So setting up of an IVF lab. IVF lab is an essential prerequisite of a level 2 ART clinic. So coming to the essential pillars of an IVF lab, infrastructure, equipment and staff, these are the essential pillars of an IVF lab. As said by Aristotle, beginning good is very important. That means a good beginning means almost half of the work is complete. So ART lab setup focuses on three key areas like place selection and also staff selection and also procedures. There should be a standard set of SOPs for the procedures and also there should be a good quality control system and also a good witness system should be there. Coming to the place, any place which is nearer to the chemical factories or petroleum pumps should be avoided and also first floor is ideal because of less disturbance and also when selecting a place it should have a good connectivity with lift or elevators for the transportation of gas cylinders etc and also if we are planning a ART setup in a hospital it should not be nearer to any radiation sources so the area required for an ideal lab is about 12 into 12 square feet so this is the basic layout of an IVF lab where the IVF lab should be always situated adjacent to the OT with a pass window in between for any transportation of substances to prevent minimal contamination. And also there should be an andrology lab adjacent to the cement collection room with a pass window in between. And also freezing room should be separate, carbon dioxide cylinder room, everything should be separate. And also while starting an IVF lab, we should have an action plan like uh, what is the site survey, design selection, budget, overall planning, equipment selection and order. Everything should be thought beforehand. And then coming to the infrastructure, like and in the embryology lab, we should be mimicking the in vivo atmosphere. So it is important to optimize the fertilization rates and pregnancy rates. If we take the incubators and culture media, they will be in a controlled conditions like almost everything will be controlled like temperature, carbon dioxide. But we have to take out the gametes into the IVF lab for various procedures like ICSI, FERT check, uh, assisted hatching, etc. So maintaining lab atmosphere in controlled conditions in terms of temperature, humidity and ambient air quality is the utmost important thing. So coming to the air quality. Air quality plays a significant role in embryogenesis, implantation and conception. So particulate matter and VOCs, these act as a threat to the air quality because VOCs in turn generate harmful mutagenic chemicals. So all these products which are used at home and work like petroleum products, like nail polishes, fabric cleaners, everything can generate VOCs which are nothing but benzene compounds, aldehyde compounds and alcohol compounds. So for maintaining a good air quality, a proper HVAC system like heating, ventilation and air conditioning system is very important. So that it delivers clean air to the room, removes any contaminants and differential air pressure is maintained and it should also control temperature and humidity. This is the international standard clean room standard for an IVF lab which should, ha which should have a class 10,000 particles and an ISO 7 room should be there. So this is the clean room concept of an IVF lab where the outside air entered goes into the air handling unit that is uh, number one and number three which is equipped with potassium permanganate carbon activated filters so that all the VOCs are filtered and the VOC filtered air will come into the box five. This is the HEPA filtration system. So any all the particulate matters can be filtered uh, from HEPA filtration system and the clean air will be entering into the embryology lab and the OT room. So this is the air cycle changes per hour and also the air returning duct will be number seven. So what we should remember is HEPA pore is like 0.3 micrometers. So VOC molecule is smaller than that. So a HEPA pore cannot filter a VOC molecule. Coming to the air quality in IVF. So a clean room IVF lab, it can increase the pregnancy rates and it, can decrease, it will decrease the miscarriage rates. So according to the international consensus, like Cairo consensus and ESHRE guideline groups, so the air quality particulate should be ISO 7, and the microorganisms should be less than 10. VOC should be around 400 to 800 parts per billion. Air changes should be 15 total air changes with three fresh air changes per hour, which can, so that 20% outside air can enter. And pressure is around 30 pascals. Temperature is around 20 to 24 degrees centigrade. And relative room humidity is around 40 and 45 degrees centigrade. So coming to the infrastructure, all the infrastructure which can 
which should avoid VOCs should be used, like water-based paints and laboratory walls and ceilings should have minimum penetrations with silicon materials used as sealants, and wood should be avoided, steel or powdered coated aluminum furniture should be used, and there should be a proper stepper vermin proofing. And burn, this is prior to starting, at least two to four weeks prior to start of an IVF lab, we should increase the lab temperature by 10 to 15 degrees centigrade, and also increase the air cycles to remove the contaminants. Coming to the equipment, according to the ART Act, this is the minimum equipment required uh, after starting an IVF lab, like there should be at least one stereo zoom microscope and incubators at least minimum two in number should be there. And this is the box incubator, that is a carbon dioxide only incubator, where three partitions are there. And the next down one is the uh, triple gas incubator. K system incubator where we can see 10 different wells so that 10 patient culture conditions can be done at a time. And also there should be a laminar air floor, sperm counting chambers. So these all should be included in the equipment required. So coming to the quality management, so appropriate steps should be taken mainly for the correct identification of gametes. So in any cost we should avoid mix-ups. So all this laminar flow hoods, everything what we are using should be checked every month for any microbial contamination by a swab test. And also every day after coming to the lab, we should check the incubator's temperature, carbon dioxide, everything, and whether proper laminar airflow pressure system, everything is maintained or not. So this is what we do is before commencing, this is for the, uh, in order to avoid mix-ups, we give a unique identification code for the patient, and then we verify the unique identification code in the lab along with the patient, and then we label, so during any procedure, we label all the containers with the unique identification code, and then we do a double witnessing system. And now this is the important thing, which is the advanced RI witness system, which uses an electronic witness system, that is radio frequency identification. So before the start of the cycle, we will be giving an RFID cards to the patient, and everything lab, everything will be RFID equipped workstations will be there. And also RFID generated tags will be, so while doing any procedures, these tags will be used for all the consumables or disposables used for the patient, and then so in the workstation, only those patient samples can be used. If the other patient sample by mistake, if it is kept, it will show as mismatch. So the quality of consumables, everything, plasticware, everything should be produced from reliable manufacturers, and also the culture medium, everything should be tested before using. Staff, this is the bare minimum requirement, like gynecologist should be there, andrologist, embryologist, counselor, anesthetist, and a medical director should be there. So after starting an IVF lab, the project does not end there. It rather begins there. The success depends upon the competence of the team, training, quality control, proper SOPs, timely audits, and patient-centered approach. So uh, this is our Kukatpali IVF lab, which we have started. So this is the IVF lab, and this is the alert system. So this is the OPU OT and the patient recovery room. And then this is inside the IVF lab, cryo room, and this is a carbon dioxide incubator, Hera cell incubator, and this is the K-system incubator, that is the triple gas incubator. This is the XC machine, and this is the RFID, RI witness system. This is the RFID equipped controls, everything is there. And this is the pass box, pass box where we have a two open door pass box. When one door is open, the other door is automatically locked for exchange of material between the embryologist and the OT staff. I just wanted to show the clean air RFID room. So this is all, this thing is the RFID equipped system. Thank you.